Hey, Hearts Academy photo students, Mr. Bunnell here. We're going to talk about Huggin. Um, there is an assignment that is uh, the Huggin practice assignment, where panorama practice, where you you take some already shot, shot photos, uh, download them from the assignment, convert them using an X Studio, which I assume you know how to do already, and then taking the JPEG files that you create, making a panorama. I have not those same sample photos from some different samples. Um, and I'm going to show you how to create a panorama. I've opened up Huggin. Now, this is something you have to have on, you have to do on a computer. It can't be on a Chromebook. The, the program won't run on a Chromebook. If you have your own personal computer that's not a Chromebook, the program will work on both Windows, Mac, oh, and also Linux. A little more challenging there. Um, but the first step is to get all the photos you're going to use downloaded onto a computer in a folder that you've named on the computer somewhere usually in the documents folder you'll have your own folder on a computer on the computer um, first step after that in creating the panorama is to load the images so i'm going to open this up and i have all my images here there's a bunch of different images and i'm going to use the control key and select all the photos at once i don't want to load one image and then come back and open another one and come back and open another one i want to load them all at once so I push and hold and not let go of the control key. And I click on each picture, each panel that I want in my panorama. Now notice I've named these panel one, panel two, panel three, and panel four. I don't use the file name from the computer because I don't know what that is. If like two weeks later I come back and I want to work on this and I look at the file names that it says DSC0012, I have no idea what that is. But if I rename it something that I recognize as useful, and I can recognize what the assignment is or what the, the photo is about just by looking at the file name. It's going to make things go much faster and much easier for me. So now I've selected all the photos. I click open and this pops up uh, and I know why it pops up. Don't worry about it. It won't pop up for you. Um, and here's the result. And it's pretty close. It looks like it lines up. It looks like it took it right. When you actually take your panorama, take the pictures left to right and name the pictures one, two, three, four, left to right. So don't make the, the rightmost photo uh, number one and the leftmost photo number four. Name it one, two, three, four, left to right. Um, so I've got my photos there. There it looks like it came in all right. And the next step is I just click the align button. It says one, two, three, and go through the process. Now this, this step, the program is finding all the matching parts where the pictures overlap because you have to overlap the photos Otherwise, it won't work. The sample photos are overlapped. Well, here's the panorama. You know, this is a faster computer, so the classroom computer is a little bit slower. It's going to take a little bit longer to um, for the computers to stitch it all together, but it will eventually stitch it all together, maybe 30 or 40 seconds, maybe a minute. Um, so this is the next step, and, and here you can see the panorama kind of worked out. Maybe I, when I took the picture, I didn't get it right quite here, and a little bit of boo-boo here. But now I'm going to create the panorama. The, the next step is I'm going to click the Create Panorama button. And I don't see the window showing up. I've got all my monitors showing, and it's not showing the next step. I am annoyed. So I'm going to stop this. I'm going to pause it. Unpause. <clears throat> so this little window, um, because I have two monitors, and I'm recording this on OBS Studio, and OBS Studio is always on top, it appeared underneath OBS Studio. That's neither here nor there. Anyway, so this little window appears, and this is the how are you going to stitch it all together. Um, TIFF is an uncompressed format. It's going to make an enormous file, so we don't want that. It's going to change this to JPEG or PNG. Either one is fine. Um, if you change it to JPEG, and change the quality to 100. Either you can use little up and down arrows here or just change the number. Leave this one checked, and that's fine. Now it's going to say... Do you want to, this project needs to be saved? So it's going to save two files. The first file, it says .pto. That's the file extension. So there's a file name and a dot and then the file extension. The file extension tells the computer what kind of file it is and what program the computer should open to match that file extension. When I first click this, it's going to ask me to save the PTO file. Now, the PTO file is the... Um, the, the file that contains, it's just basically a text file that says all these pictures match up in this way, how they match up, and it's just a bunch of information for the program to use to make a panorama. It's not the panorama itself, but 
Uh, so I'm going to change this. Bunnell, Arctis, Pano, 23, 11, 26. Um, so I've changed the name, and I know it exactly. See, the file name tells me what the file is. And as a time-saving uh, technique, I'm going to copy all this. So I control A to select it all. Control insert to copy it in, I'm on Windows. And then I'm going to click Save. Now, see, it's going to add the PTO at the end for me. So I'm going to click Save. And now it's going to ask me to save the JPEG. The, the name is already highlighted. So all I have to do is Shift Insert, and it pastes in the file name that I already put in so I don't have to retype it. Just a tiny little sa time-saving technique. So I'm going to click Save. And now it's going to go and create the panorama. It's got the little progress window here. Oops, I can't move it apparently. I'm going to pause for a second. Oop, and there we go. So there's a progress bar. It's in progress. The, the, the panorama is making itself. And you see the progress right there. I don't see any other. Let's see if I see. Oops, I clicked the wrong button there. Oops, and the working window I, I lost out on. It's already done. So now I've made the panorama. And I can go, oops, I made it, did it again. I'm doing stuff on my second monitor. I'm going to go over to my, um, use the file manager and navigate to the folder where I kept everything. And if I, there we go. And since I have lots and lots and lots of stuff, it takes a minute to get there. Let's see where this stuff opens. And here we are. So uh, here is the final panorama. And it doesn't look too large, but then if I zoom in, oops. Let's see. There you go. If I zoom in, you can see there's a lot of detail there. We can zoom to the side. And I mean, scroll to side, scroll side to side. You can see it's quite, quite extensive. And this one was this one I used a technique called focus stacking, where I focused on this stapler, and I, there's a, this is a stack of five different photos, focused at different distances, so it shows everything from the stapler very close to the very back of the classroom. Um, anyway, that's the the technique. Now, when you turn in the practice panorama you're going to turn in this JPEG and the PTO file. And be aware that the PTO file is not the picture the JPEG is. So make sure you've got a file name that says .pto at the end and a file name that says .jpg at the end. This should be the same file name for both of those. Um, so that's the technique. If you have any questions, hit me up in class and um, we can go over how this program works. But this. You just watch this through a few times. You'll be able to, to get this uh, get this rolling. And then the, the final itself will be a panorama. Anyway, until next time.